Okay, welcome everybody to uh, Deep Dive with DUI for our April session. Um, we are, I know we took some time off at the beginning of the year. We had our, our, our dry suit giveaway. We, and for people who are interested, um, be sure you go to our website, to sign up for the newsletter. Um, with the newsletter, you can uh, get notified about any upcoming specials, promotions, and stuff like that. Um, currently, we have a promotion going on for um, professional first responders. Um, so if you are a professional first responder, I, I, I really suggest you sign up for that one because you do get a chance to win a, a free premium dry suit. So um, it's a deal you can't pass up for free. Anyways. One entry per person. Um, I know some of you kind of forget that you just submitted an entry like last month and you keep resubmitting over and over and over again. But anyways, it's all good. <laughs> um, so this week, um, or this week, this month, um, we have something pretty exciting. Um, it's the, the people who were participating or trying to do or actually doing the longest open water, open salt water scuba dive. Um, this was a event that I actually participated in a very, 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 very small part. Um, and at the time I was like, going, this is crazy because, huh, how many of you have actually dove longer than an hour, <laughs> you know, and then, and then you sit there and think about, um, cold waters in San Diego and you go, wow, how are you going to do a long dive in San Diego? So anyways, we're, we're going to go through that. Um, so I have three special guests this month. Um, first off, uh, I'm gonna let them go ahead and uh, unmute themselves. I'm gonna introduce them. Uh, so first is, is Christy Quill, um, and she's a Patty Open Water Scuba Instructor. She was born and raised in Southern California. Uh, she was a Navy hospital corpsman. And in 2011, she became a certified scuba diver. So it's like, quickly moving on to breaking world records. I don't know. <laughs> um, and then by 2014, she was a open water uh, instructor with for Patty. And then she kind of came up with this crazy idea of um, the world's longest open water dive. Um, and then so our next guest is Scott Boatman. He's an SSI open water scuba instructor. Um, who actually is a newer instructor, but you've been a dive master like forever, it seems like. Um, 10 years. Originally from 10 years. <laughs> I'll be on yep. that same boat anyways. <laughs> um, so he's originally from the Midwest. Um, he fell in love with San Diego while serving in the Navy. Um, and then from there, he pursued his dream as becoming a scuba, certified scuba diver, became a dive master forever for 10 years and then became an open water instructor. And then his wife, Lindsay, is an, also an OS, uh, SSI open water scuba instructor. And she's been diving also since 2011. And she has an affection for water and its creatures. Um, and she's been very passionate about that for her whole life. Um, and she likes working as a dive professional to combine her love of exploring the underwater world and teaching and sharing that with people. Um, so welcome um, to this crazy um, deep dive with DUI, these things that we do. And the thing about deep dive with DUI, it's really about divers talking with other divers about kind of like things that I'm interested in. So, so welcome because I'm interested in this um, and I'm sure other people hopefully are. <laughs> uh, otherwise, whatever. <laughs> um, but it's always things that I'm interested in. It's like, where do I want to go dive? Who do I want to go meet and do these kinds of things? So that's why um, we're creating these things. It's, you know, basically divers talking with the divers. Um, so before we actually get started, I like opening this up and you can take your, do your own little intro. But with your own little intro, I have a question for each one of you guys or people. I don't know how to say these things these days. Um, what is it that got you into either scuba diving or what is, what's your passion about scuba diving or what's the thing that you're looking forward to? What keeps you doing this? I mean, I know for me, it's like all of a sudden, once I started diving, it's like, oh, geez, I'm addicted. And I was like 
diving four to five days a week. It was like, I couldn't stop. So what is that passion for you? Um, so Christy, do you want to start since you're the one who created this whole initial event? <laughs> I think for me, scuba, it, it's a, it's a release. It, it's, it's calming. It, it's comfortable to me. Uh, listening to your bubbles is relaxing. Seeing what's, you know, 40, 50, 60 feet underwater that you know, most people don't get to see is, is nice. Finding treasures are nice. Um, it's relaxing. That, that's what I take from it. Yeah, it's, I've noticed that if you had a stressful day, it's still good to go out and do that night time. <laughs> oh, so Scott, there's those jets that we're talking about. Um, I saw you. Okay. So everybody. Yeah, but I'm no, closer than you. Scott is located directly underneath Miramar. So it's like top gun thing going on. And I'm Hold just it. like a mile away, so I have a precursor to when I should probably mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, Scott? Um, I, my stepfather was a diver, him and his friends, and growing up in the Midwest, they used to go to the lakes, Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri, Arkansas stuff, and they would all scuba dive. And one time they let me put a mask on with a, with an octo in my mouth with my life jacket and float around on top and I could see underwater and breathe underwater. And I was hooked, hooked since then. Um, and then I out here in 2011, I got certified. Um, that's actually where Lindsay and I met. I was doing open water and she was just starting her advanced. Um, neither one of us had a dive buddy. So we started diving together. We would dive three, four, five times a weekend. Um, we racked up over a hundred dives pretty quickly. And I ended up going to a Patty pro night, I think at Sports Chalet and Rocio reeled me into being a professional, whether she realizes it or not. I'm assuming she's on here. So thank you, Rocio. Um, Went straight into Dive Master, did that for 10 years, and Lindsay and I just did our instructor this winter. Uh, I do it because I like to share with people what I enjoy doing. Um, I Don't get me wrong, I enjoy seeing cool stuff underwater, but I can go to the shores and hover in 20 feet of water and be just as happy. I don't care. It's just that quiet, relaxed weightlessness that I love. So that's my story. Awesome. I didn't know that's how you guys met. That's yeah, <laughs> I was doing dives one and two, and she was doing fish ID just so she could get out and dive. Yeah, she went, who is this open water yeah. diver? Dive one. <laughs> who, who is this diver in a SeaWorld wetsuit? <laughs> <laughs> the bright blue. Uh, and so you got, yeah. yeah, so I basically started... Um, with snorkeling and me and my aunt would always go out to the cove and just snorkel. And I found myself being more and more intrigued and um, also finding that I was a little bit scared of the unknown. So I was like, I need to do more of this so that I cannot be scared anymore. So that's kind of how it started. And now I keep diving because it's just, it's a release. It's quiet. It's, you never know what you're going to see. So kind of that surprise element of, you know, either seeing nothing out of the ordinary or, you know, seeing something crazy and just the opportunity that that could happen is, is definitely kind of like a thrill each time. So that's kind of why I keep doing it. Awesome. So that's, this is, this is great. Um, also, seriously, I had no idea that that's how you guys met. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> So that's great. You ask them how they got engaged. <laughs> Was it underwater too? Yeah. Okay, well, we can. I see those point, baby. We're we're gonna need some like photos of there's, that. There's video. there's video. There's video. There's video. On YouTube. Christy actually took the video. So oh, that's awesome. I I had her prearrange that she was supposed to be watching from the parking lot to see when me and Lindsay went out. And long story short, she saw another couple going out, went out way too early, 
because she was supposed to be hiding on the north side of Iacetos because I was going to come past, turn around and propose right in front of there, which I did. However, she was uh, looking at the wrong people. I see her coming down the wall and I, if you watch the video, you can see it. I'm flipping my light, go away, get back, you know? <laughs> so long story short, finally get down there. Um, I propose and all the bubbles go up when Lindsay realizes what I'm saying. And then as soon as we're done doing that, Christy comes up and she's like, I got to go. I, I have no, no air. air left by. <laughs> and she's yeah. the whole time, the other time she's like, did Scott change his I mind? Had a <laughs> amount of the other couple. <laughs> She she was well within acceptable range, but absolutely. But it was yeah. time to go. <laughs> yeah. Wow, uh, that's that's awesome. Okay, so let's get this thing started. Um, so, Christy, want to want to kick this off because uh, you're, I mean, basically you became an instructor, right? And then all of a sudden you came up with this idea. What what's what? started this whole thing? Well, how it all began was actually during uh, instructor class. Uh, I was getting notifications that my mom had passed away. And, you know, it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't as, a sh as shocking because we knew what was kind of coming. It just was bad timing. And I was actually going to go visit her uh, during the class, but because of how far I had gotten, I would have had to start over. So my mom, you know, said, look, you know, just finish your class. Uh, when she did pass away, um, I was kind of challenged by a few of my sisters to do a, a three-day cancer walk. And if you know me, I don't, I don't walk. I, I don't like to walk. Um, I told them, Hey, I'll buy you shoes. I'll buy you camping gear. I'll get you whatever you need, but I, no, I'm not doing it. So now I'm like the worst sister ever. And I said, well, you know, I'm a diver. I'll dive while y'all walk. And one of my sisters was like, yeah, right. And I said, well, let's see what we can come up with, you know? And I also had always had questions about when you, you know, participate in fundraisers or if you, you know, do, do, uh, do give donations, you know, where, where exactly does that money go? You know, which got me thinking about two aspects. One, a, a American Cancer Society fundraiser. And also, hey, is if I'm going to be sitting underwater for a few days, does, does a record for this even exist? Well, come to find out, the men had records, uh, but there wasn't a woman that had a record. So I jumped on the phone and I talked to the Mission Valley rep and I ended up with my own campaign and signed a bunch of uh, paperwork that said 100% of everything that we made was gonna go to research. You know, it wasn't gonna buy post-it notes and pens and furniture, like everything that, that we earned for this fundraiser was going directly to research. So I was really happy about that. Um, I also contacted Guinness in New York and I said, well, you know, since there isn't a woman that, that holds a record and these men do, well, I would like to know how I could, you know, try that out. So you uh, get sent an application and there's a little bit of a waiting process. And then when it comes back, um, you have the option to pay for Guinness to come out there or Guinness will make you pay for not having them come out there. And they send you 300 pages of rules and, and, and things that you have to follow. Um, in order to be the first woman, you know, to get this record, I had to achieve at least 50 hours, five zero. Um, which, you know, it, it, it's funny because when I brought this up to Scott, he kind of looked at me like, are you crazy? And, and I told him, you know, well, do you think we could do this? you know, this is what, this is what Guinness says. And this, this is everything that we have to follow. And, you know, I gave him around a uh, kind of a roundabout idea of what I wanted to do. And, and we selected La Jolla Shores. We've all been there several times, you know, for, for our open water training and beyond and, and just fun dives. So we knew that was our site, but we didn't know where to start. And we set up a four hour dive um just to kind of give us some real 
you know, realistic expectations to kind of see if, if it could even happen, you know, something as simple as four hours. And, you know, knowing, knowing the area as well made it a lot easier. Uh, finding the depth, you know, and, and kind of playing with the tides a little bit. Uh, I hate to say it, but, you know, that four hours turned into, I felt it was really easy, which kind of pumped me up because it also showed them that, you know, some gear exchanges and very basic things could happen in four hours, you know, and, and before you knew it, brainstorming had begun. And we knew that we needed to form a team. We knew that we needed to, uh, you know, look at exactly the type of timeline that we had to work with. When did we want to do the dive, you know, and then crunch a bunch of, you know, four and eight and 10 and 12 hour dives, uh, night dives, you know, we tried to, to put everything that would get us to the actual uh, start day of the dive, um, you know, and, and once we started putting it together and, and uh, we got the team together, um, it, it became a, a very daily reality uh, as far as, you know, planning and briefing and, and, and getting, you know, the team leader and the team coordinator and air and food and media. And, you know, we, we wanted to have everything squared away um, before we, you know, announced what we were doing, because I'm not going to lie. I was, I was, I was a little shy about, you know, kind of saying what we wanted to do because, you know, every time we did a training dive, you know, there was always some kind of lesson learned. And um, I think having Scott and Lindsay as the leader coordinator combo, um, putting all the logistics and everything made it a lot easier for me, the vessel to accomplish, you know, what, we, what we did. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of how it started. Uh, so is this kind of like pretty much like a full-time job then, or were you working in, <laughs> cause I mean, it's a lot you know, of planning. I, it, you know, it, it, it was, we spent a lot of time on the phone, a lot of time uh, FaceTiming, a lot of time at La Jolla Shores. Uh, we would plan a training day and the weather would, you know, not be diveable or, you know, something would come up, but um, it, the, there, the answer is yes. <laughs> there is a, <laughs> there is a lot of time involved. Believe me. Yeah. We, I mean, both Scott and I were working full-time jobs and you know, we were also dive mastering on the side, but this was definitely, um, when we were presented it with it and we knew it was moving forward, it was definitely a, a full-time job between the two of us trying to coordinate everything, logistics, um, all, all of that. So, so prior to, to any of this, I mean, cause normally people that are doing dives longer than, you know, a, I mean, most open water divers, you know, to have an hour long dive is pretty rare, right? <laughs> I mean, that they're starting off. And then as you get better with your air consumption, you're doing longer dives, but now you're going into multi-hour dives. And most of those, most people that are doing those have done some sort of technical training at some sort to, I mean, did you guys do any of, have any of that as a background well, or just kind of going into it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I went to commercial dive school. Um, and mostly went into dive medicine as opposed to like hat diving. Uh, I wore a hat several times, but, uh, the dive medicine was kind of where I, I felt I was a best fit. You know, I, I did hyperbarics for a little bit and, you know, maintaining a dive medic certification, it, it helped me kind of plan, you know, what was necessary for the dive planning because you know guinness set the requirements that you must stay you know below 16 feet no surface contact whatsoever you know and then of course dive medicine and my head is kicking in and we need to keep this an odco dive so my range for the dive was 16 to 24 feet and those training dives kind of helped you know we we got the endurance and, and progressed smartly but, well, uh, 
And the approach was kind of like, if you've ever prepared for like a marathon or a half marathon, the approach was, we need to get to at least this point of success to be able to say, okay, yes, we can definitely move forward. And it's definitely possible because you don't, you know, when you train for a, a half marathon, they say, okay, you know, you want to start out doing, you know, one mile, three miles, five miles, 10 miles, whatever, but you never want to complete more than half of what your full half marathon or full marathon is going to be. So our approach was similar to that. We knew that we had to do, we started with the four hour and I think we jumped to like, I don't know, Christy, like a 12 hour. And then we had, a uh, we did an hours. eight hour. We did, yeah. uh, we did a four and eight, a 12, a 24. And during the 24 is when it finally sunk into Christy's head. She could not do this in a wetsuit because I had been telling her since day one, she needed a dry suit. Which is where DUI comes in. Correct. Well, it's still, it's even in a dry suit. That's a, it's a long I time. I think the longest so, time that I stayed so, in, a, in a semi-dry was like 11 hours. And, yeah. and I knew better and I got out of the water and kind of put my head down and, okay, Scott, let's... Well, let's so break when, out the dry suit. So what month did the actual dive happen again? Um, we started July. July 9th. July. July. Okay. You think July, the water's warm in San Diego. It's really not. So for people watching this is they, they need to understand that you're looking at temperatures. I mean, we really have thermoclines during that time frame. So the surface may be a little bit warmer. When I say a little bit warmer, it might be in the low 60s. You know, and then easily when you go down to 30, 40 feet, you can drop into the upper 50. So there's there's definitely a cold water. I mean, would I say it's 70 degrees once in a while, <laughs> you know, on the top five feet? But then as soon as you drop down, it's like, no, you're talking cold water. And so, that's like the height of the, like the heat of September where it's like 70 right. degrees. Right. <laughs> yeah. September is when our water is the warmest, not July. The water is still cold. Um, so people... Yeah that are watching this that are thinking like, oh, San Diego, you know, sunny San Diego where the temperature in the air is like average 72 degrees year round, right? The water itself is cold. Uh, it is a cold water dive location. So just to clarify that for people. Well, and a lot of our dives, our training dives were done in the beginning of January, I think. We maybe did a couple in December, but then it was like January and like so partially winter, spring. So we're still really cold. And, you know, I, I got to give Chrissy props because even in the semi-dry and she was doing eight, 10, 12 hours. I mean, it was insanity to think about doing more than an hour, more than two hours. So, right. yeah. So again, for people to understand last weekend, the water temp was 50 degrees. <laughs> um, so <laughs> even doing your training dives, um, just so you know, all my friends are complaining about how cold they were for an hour long dive at 50 degrees and they're all in dry suits. <laughs> so I, I get your, wow, it's impressive. <laughs> it's like you grew up in the Midwest or something in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> that was my excuse in the old days. <laughs> yeah, it was cold. She, she just hard headed. Maybe a little bit, but yeah, it was cold. Um, but you know, I'm also kind of glad that we uh, did have that cold water training, if you want to say, um, because it, it did end up, you know, it was, there were several times in my dive profile, even at, you know, 18, 19 feet that it was 60, 59. I think the coldest that I saw was at 22 feet and it was 52 degrees. And I believe that was the very last day. Yeah. So, that, that was, that was the, yes. Yeah. That was the very, time. very last day. And I think it was kind of like in the 6 a.m. time frame. I mean, right around <laughs> hour 42, somewhere in there. Yeah, it was. But we, have, cold. but we should go back to that point. So remind us, Jack, to go back to that point, because that was a very pivotal moment. But we should. OK, anyways, I know that we have our our, our list of things, because um, also, obviously, there's more than just the three of you for this whole big show, so to speak. I mean, cause you're talking about, you know, the Guinness world record thing and then all the planning and preparation with this. So I assume it wasn't just, you know, Scott and Lindsay taking care of this and Christy, you're just like, 
Yeah, just us. No. <laughs> Strutting around going, yep, I'm just the diver. No way, not a chance. Uh, so I assume there's more people going on working with this. Yeah, yeah. Scott? Uh, yeah, so once we got started, um, we kind of made different positions, I guess you would say. So I was the leader, Lynch was a coordinator. Uh, it's just a fancy word for saying I was, Lindsay and I are both very busy. We were spread all over the place. Um, Christy, actually, her and some of her friends um, went out and started, we had flyers made, started passing those out. They were getting the word out. Um, so we had team leader, team coordinator. We had team media. So Amanda was in charge of also spreading the word and social media, stuff like that. Um, just getting it out there to so that people know about it. Uh, to find volunteers and sponsors and everything that was probably some of the hardest stuff i mean doing the training dives yeah i mean it was a little work but it's we spent hours and hours and days you know emailing people um setting up a schedule uh because not only did we have to have divers we had to have topside support we had to have uh, official timekeepers, official witnesses to satisfy Guinness. We had uh, team food, uh, Lindsay's Aunt Marilyn, who kept us all fed. We yeah. had restaurants that uh, donated food to us via Christy going out and, you know, speaking to them. Um, we had people, it wouldn't have even been possible without the donations that everybody gave us whether it be equipment or air or food um, and just the volunteers to come out and, and be safety divers um i i mean i had seen you around before jack it was kind of one of those things where we pass and we nod hey how you doing um and i think i just walked up to you one day i'm like hey we're doing this you want to you want to get in on it yeah um, <laughs> i remember that because I, I was like um as we go through the people as we go through some of these pictures you'll see it i remember going why are they always like <laughs> wheeling around this cart you know oh, like, uh, i'm like that's my dive wagon, mm. wagon. Like, going, mm. and i was like going, who are these people walking around this cart <laughs> <laughs> you know how hard it is to carry like you know 10 tanks of air down just with like you know five people yeah dive wagon yeah, yeah so yeah i was always kind of like what are they doing over there <laughs> <laughs> well, and we did, and we couldn't um, really say anything in the beginning. We we couldn't really talk about it because we weren't. We needed to get through those first several training dives to be able to say, okay, yes, we're this is moving forward. This is actually a reality. And so, even though we were working on the it for months, we couldn't say anything or really field any any volunteer divers until it was actually happening. So we had a close group of people that were our volunteers that were people that just we knew and we could trust and like that was it it was just this little tiny core group of people in the beginning and it they, started with five people yeah first dive was five people and so, three of them are here so i'm gonna uh open up this uh the share screen here so i can start showing some of these images um so i know you you're talking about the training dive so hang on i'm switching modes everyone gets this fancy blue screen um so oh boy this leads up to a question right away is <laughs> um is like obviously if you're going to be underwater for 50 hours um people need to eat refuel and so this i assume answers the question for a lot of people um i do kind like the of. So, <laughs> i like the banana i'm gonna have to try the banana raspberry something whatever that is that looks good i know some of them i was like those look tasty yeah they're, they're so delicious <laughs> <laughs> there she is. That's that was the that was the meat and potatoes right there. Mm -hmm. Everything that I could possibly want was was blended and put into those sports pouches, and and that's how you know Red Bulls and food and Gatorades and Mountain Dews like Snickers. Yeah, at four o'clock in the morning when you get a request for a Snickers bar, and we're like, what? I we don't hungry. have a blender that is like we don't have a Snickers bar, but we got a blender and we got some milk. So like I guess we'll do it. So then you put in obviously other stuff that was not pre-packaged in those in those things. Yeah. So and she I, got so the 
she got the reusable ones for warm items because we had the pre-packed stuff it was like okay we can mm -hmm. have these on hand but the reusable ones for like when she wanted soup when she wanted just hot water um because there were times when she just requested hot water so we just had a constant cot like a coffee maker with just constant jugs of hot water um so that's what we put in the reusables so these are some of the is this that's so a training dive. Training this dive. is a training dive because she's still in a wetsuit. Right. <laughs> so that would probably have been uh, like maybe an eight or a 12 hour. Yeah. Not sure. Right. Really, it looks but... like it's a little more, you have a tent set up and everything. So yeah. I had no idea what this photo was when I was looking through these. I she mean... was, she was putting, I think she's putting some sort of balm on her feet. Oh because... yeah. yeah. Like, being in the bathtub too long? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Which was funny because it was like when she was in the wetsuit and she was doing the training dives, we encountered different <laughs> issues with her being in the wetsuit for so long versus what we encountered when we put her in the dry suit. So it was almost like we, we started with a dry suit or we started with a wetsuit and we were like, okay, problem solved, problem, 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 problem. Is that a chair? All those. What is that? Is no, that a chair? She has oh, fins. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, oh. <laughs> and so she, we would resolve those problems. And then when we realized at the 12 hour that we have to switch to a dry suit, then we were like, now we have a whole set of new problems that we have to solve. All right. So this is what I remember seeing all the time. <laughs> I'm yep. like, what, what's yeah. with the cart? <laughs> <laughs> My dive wagon. So you can basically see in there, we have PVC pipe and there's, uh, you know, our main float, which would mark our main like center point of what we would affectionately call Christie's playground. So we would set up a perimeter because, I mean, it's the Hoya Shores. We didn't want a whole group of open water students kind of, you know, accidentally coming through her area and disturbing what she's trying to do. So we set up a little perimeter and basically had these little flags that um, Jason, he was one of our core divers in the original who his parents had um, a sign making shop. So he made us the signs that said like dive training, please stay back. So we kind of set up a perimeter for her to be able to do the training dives and, and hopefully not be disturbed while she was doing that. But we did encourage people once we got the word out, we encouraged people to come by and like say hi to her. <laughs> I like, that. I like that picture right there. That was a completion of our 12 hour dive. Yeah. Yep. This was our first night dive. Yeah. So this, so in these training dives, I assume you didn't try to sleep, or because I know that later on, I know you, I'm probably pre jumping ahead, but had you thought about the whole staying awake thing for that long? <laughs> um, and what that does? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I learned how to sleep really quickly, actually, um, which came in handy. Well, the, uh, origi the original solution was Christy didn't want to do anything different than what her normal equipment was. So the original plan was we'll take a lawn chair down there for her that completely, you know, folds flat and she would sleep face down with her regulator pressed against the folding chair. So that was the plan. And Scott and I were like, eh, I don't love it. Like we have to have safety divers that are like a different caliber for nighttime dives versus daytime dives. Because Scott and I couldn't be down there with her 24 seven. We had our own land operation that we were doing. So we were like, we have to have certain people for, with her at night that are her night team. So then we decided, well, we want to do, let's do a full face. Can we do a full face? Can we get a sponsor that will do a full face so she can sleep? So we, we got the sponsor, Ocean Reef stepped up and donated the use of a, of a full face mask for that purpose. But during the actual record dive, we didn't end up actually using it. So she mm. did her normal setup. I used it for two hours. That's true. I'm sorry. You did use it for two hours. <laughs> we did. We, we didn't really take into consideration um, how much air was going to be used in the non-ditch process. So um, the full face was, was comfortable and it was kind of nice to kind of give my mouth a break. And believe it or not, I have a small mouth. So my regulator kind of fits.
perfect. I mean, it, it once it goes in, it just kind of stays there, you know, and by pressing my face on that, on the lawn chair was, was perfect. Okay. So the sleeping ended up really helping. <laughs> so when you started um, this whole process and you're officially going, um, you had to get the word out, right? So what were your channels for that? Cause I know I got a picture of something here that you, is this one of the flyers that you were? Oh, there it is. Yep. Yeah, so we basically, Facebook was a lot of it. Uh, we printed a ton of these and Sport Chalet, who was one of our sponsors at the time, let us put the flyers at the dive counter for um, multiple locations. So we did that. Um, we took, I mean, we took these flyers out there with us during our, our longer training dives when we were getting closer and we would just hand them out to divers and just be like, here you go, get the word out, tell your friends. So the original plan was to do 72 hours. So we had to have, um, and some people did more than one shift, but we had um, probably off the top of my head, 30, 30 to 40 safety divers lined up. Um, people had just heard about us. Hey, I want to do this. We had an email set up. They could email me and I would, uh, Lindsay and I would work the schedule. Um, that was probably one of the hardest things was just getting those divers trying to coordinate because who wants to get up at two o'clock in the morning and go dive for an hour from two to three in the morning? Not very many people. Yeah. Well, yeah, those, <laughs> so those the, are the toughest to, to, the, to fill. The, the daytime slots were easy, but, uh, Fortunately, Christy knew uh, someone that uh, is a tech diver and Mike Wind, he lives up in LA. Um, so he had uh, him and a group of his buddies came down when we started doing like the, the bigger training dives and for the actual dive, uh, rebreathers, twin divers, tech divers, uh, Jonathan, which I'm sure he's probably on here. He helped us out at night. So those were the, the, caliber of divers that we had there with her at night in yeah, the water there they are. you jumped yeah. ahead that's, like my, that's mike and i know i know yeah <laughs> so this is uh mike Wynn and kevin bond um they were two of them um he had uh, four five six guys come down with him and then jonathan lives here in san diego uh, and he was on uh, twins and slinging a, a bailout too so jonathan spent a lot of time down there at night so thank you jonathan um but we couldn't just put open water divers down there with her at night. You had to have a different level of diver at night down there. And we always had uh, two divers with her anytime it was dark. Uh, daytime, we'd have single divers. Nighttime, we had double tech divers down there with her. And I think overall, like with, once we did the actual record attempts, I think we had over a hundred <coughs> divers signed up. I mean, including mm -hmm. our own team and our own people and stuff, but we had over a hundred divers that was just local community. And like Scott said, the LA community and the word that um, Mike Wind spread and all of that. So it was very, it was very heartwarming to just see the support of our local divers and people would, I mean, literally I had people come out at like two o'clock in the morning and they're like, I'm here for my shift. And I'm like, God bless you guys. Like, thank you for showing up because otherwise I would have to get my gear on and jump in the water and be like, all right, everybody don't just don't move. I'll be back. So. And I, we had, there was only one no call, no show. Uh, so we had to have somebody to fill in for him. And then we had one that had some gear issues, but pretty much everybody showed up for their shifts. They did their thing. We had more divers, which was surprising. We had more divers than we even needed. And it got to the point where like, Hey, if three or four of you want to go out there and hang out with her, go for it. You know, uh, because I'm not going to tell you that you can't go out there. You're, you're not on the schedule. Go you know have fun keep her keep her entertained and she had a lot of so, people come by and say hi like people who weren't even yeah right so associated. speaking of i'm going to start sharing some of these other photos for you guys um because <clears throat> you're kind of jumping around Sorry. so no it's okay i mean this is all it's, <laughs> it's your guys show um because i find it all interesting but um again leading up to this that was the training dives because now you are kind of alluding to the actual dive but um, going back again, when you're transitioning from the training dive, getting ready for the, the full on thing, like you said, you had Ocean Reef um, for the face mask. Um, and here I can see you're in, this is the Flex 50, FLX 5050 dry suit. 
See, I, I know our old product line. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> anyway, so I'm, I have some of these photos that I'll, I'll cycle through. Um, so Christy, how many dry suit dives have you done before this point in time? Like two. Oh, so expert. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All good. Um, that picture right there um, was, was probably one of my favorite days uh, because putting that underneath and turning that blue heat on was money. Mm -hmm. It was, it, it probably is actually what saved the dive just because of how cold like you said, San Diego waters are. And um, without it, there's no way that I would have been able to, to go as long as I did. Yeah, so for people who don't know that the blue heat is an electric um, a heat, it, I guess, it's a heated undergarment um, where the battery pack is on the outside of the dry suit. Um, and again, technology from you know, a number of years ago uh, goes in through the inflation port to a undergarment that has essentially it's like a, I would say like a heated blanket that helps keep your body warm. Um, that was the hands, um, your body and your feet. It's basically it's the whole setup. Okay, just clarifying some of that stuff. Um, and that's Faith. Um, she, was, um, she was part of DOI at the time. Um, and she was an advocate for this product because of all her trips to the Antarctic that she was doing. Um, I still have not dove one of these myself yet, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so these were the battery packs that we would have to replace. And um, so that was a, a new wrinkle to the logistics portion. Um, we had to figure out a way to charge the batteries. We, they gave us four. So we had to figure out how to constantly have a battery ready, two batteries charging, and a battery that's like in route. So we had one she's using, one that's on her way to her, and two that are charging at all times. Yeah, and just so people know, this is like older battery technology, hence the size. Um, newer batteries these days, you know, you get are more compact with longer battery life. So. I feel sorry for you had to lug that around. <laughs> hey, I don't. Seven years ago, I mean, we're coming up on seven years ago. So, you know, without it, I would have, I would have froze. Um, so then this, I assume these are, you're getting um, some other sponsors. Because um, I assume all this stuff took money, right? So, <laughs> I mean, to, it's a lot of stuff that you had to get together. A lot of the folks that came out, um, like the, the end zone and Hooters, uh, Hooters yeah. and some of the other restaurants, you know, they were, they were there to, to feed, uh, the top side folks, the safety divers. And, um, yeah, I never got really any of that. Uh, one, <laughs> one diver came down with a Ziploc of some, uh, chicken bones. So I knew Hooters had shown up, but uh, yeah, they were there for, for everyone on the beach. Just to taunt you enough that. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. While you're like, and they're like, oh, by the way, here's your, here's your carnation instant breakfast, yogurt, cocktail. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, we basically had a base camp that was right next to the La Jolla Shores Hotel. Um, so for the actual dive, for the record dive, we had um, La Jolla Shores Hotel donated uh, a room or uh, no, I'm sorry. They gave us like a major discount on a room and um, that they were, they were letting us charge batteries in the, <laughs> actually during the, I think it was a train dives. They, we had gotten a motor home thinking we could charge them there because it had a generator <clears throat> and it just wasn't enough. Um, so they were gracious enough to let us sit in there. Um, I well, it's like the there. reception desk like the lobby. yeah kind of a reception area and they let us plug in our battery chargers and charge batteries so and gopros and gopros, GoPros yeah <clears throat> um <clears throat> amanda was very busy trying to keep batteries and gopros charged and and gopros downloaded and dumped and wiped and ready to go because that so. was the other element for the record dive and part of the documentation for guinness was we had to record the entire thing from start to finish 
So we had a start time, we had an end time and everything in between, there couldn't be more than two minutes of lag of not accounted for time. So we literally had like, I, I mean, the GoPros weren't even donated. It was like, I've got a GoPro, I've got a GoPro, keep them rolling. And it was like insanity. I think we had like maybe four or five GoPros that we used for the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, state of the art. I see a yeah. GoPro one. Two, <laughs> GoPro it was a two. different time, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Seven years ago. <laughs> uh, and then this is the the full face mask that you're talking about. Yep. Yeah. And it was it was mainly because you're consuming more air with the face mask. Is that what? That and it was a little bit hard to to make the transition. The switch oh, was rough. The switch, mm-hmm. especially <laughs> at night because yeah. she was wearing it more at night. So it just, right. it was tough to do. Did you have quick releases on the face mask at all? Like a quick disconnects at all? Christy. I don't remember. Oh, Christy, you're on mute. I'm not sure. Christy, you're muted right now. <laughs> Christy, you gotta hit the mute button in the bottom left-hand corner. Oh, you can hear me now. Yeah, you're waving like frantically, like. <laughs> no, everything that came out to me was all ready to go. All I had to do was just put it on. You know, the top side folks took care of everything and it didn't matter how it was connected, how it was working. I put it on, I used it. And when it was done, we sent it back to the beach. Yeah, it, it wasn't like it wasn't functioning properly or anything. It was. No, it no, was, it worked perfect. No, it was doing everything it was supposed to do. It was just sort of a situational thing that we were like, eh, right. just, so. yeah. Then, and how many times have you dove a full face mask before this? Uh, <laughs> several, but the, the dawn ditching, like I, like I was talking about earlier, it just, it, it took too much air yeah. right. just to dawn ditch. Like if I would have started it and then, you know, we just mm-hmm. changed the tanks out that way, it would have been a lot different, but, right. but no, that's a, it's a very good mask. It's comfortable. i I had a good solid hour nap in that. And then, so you got some, is, is this where you currently work, Scott? Or... Yes, I'm currently sitting at RNL Carriers right now. <laughs> yeah, so they're donating again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, and then this will answer some people's questions. Um, <laughs> preemptively. And going to come up. That's a you um, question, Christy. Well, uh, well, I, I, I can address this because a little bit of this is um, there is a valve oh, on a dry you? suit um, where you don't want to have, uh, you're drinking a lot of fluids. You also have to um, urinate at some point in time. And so this is a device that women can wear that allows them to um, use the P valve on the dry suit. Works and, great. And this was with San Diego divers. And then also you had, uh, Scott, you're saying, how many tanks was it that you guys had? Yeah, we had uh, we had more than enough. Sports Chalet donated all the tanks, um, all the air. We had actually had a team air that would we would go through, you know, five or ten tanks, and then the next morning they would run them over to Sports Chalet, get them filled, and bring them back to us. So we always had plenty of air. But to be uh, clear, Sports mostly, Chalet, mostly Christie's air. Every, everybody else like came yeah. with their own air. Right. Yeah, from start uh, to Christy's finish. Christie's air and our air. Start okay. to finish, I went through 28 tanks. For the, for the whole, whole dive. Okay, so this is, I think we're transitioning here to the day of the dive. Is that mm-hmm. what these pictures are? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so this was Guinness's donation. <laughs> Yes. This is what official, you get for your uh, official your balloons. <laughs> yeah. I made like, this an official event. <laughs> those, those balloons. Um, give some people some idea of what the conditions were like during that time, I think. Yeah. And we had a kayak crew that was running things out to the main float. So batteries, food, anything that Christy needed, anything that other divers needed, they were running those out in the kayak. So this was like the day of getting her ready to go in. How to don a dry suit with a team. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. pretty much. 
Yeah, and sorry, blue, some of the, blue hopefully blue everyone dry. can see these photos, so. So this is actually you entering the water for the event? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went ahead and I kicked out on my own and um, the boat that you see out there uh, kind of had all my gear. Oops, backwards. I kind of wanted to take my time and, you know, I wanted Christie's playground to be set up. I wanted the, you know, the, you can see a little bit of the rope. Um, that was kind of like how they marked off my area because we had to, we had to keep our eye on my depth the entire time. I had, like I said, stay below 16 feet and above 25. So, and she once had everything, to have this beach ball. Yeah, that's how we <laughs> marked. That's how we marked the float with like a way bigger. <laughs> yeah, so it stands yeah. off from the rest of the classes that were going exactly. on. Exactly. Exactly. I thought it was great. It was. And but uh, yeah, we. We got to the appropriate depth. Everything was set up. Boom, time started. So basically what we did was we took an entire setup with a computer. So we took, you know, a full rig set with a computer, like basically, you know, a rental unit. So she would just flip into a new BC, flip out of a new BC or her old BC, and it would just like a whole gear switch each time she swapped tanks. We had, uh, <clears throat> so the playground was rectangular. Um, we had to do it that way because of the changing of the tide because she couldn't go above 16 or below 24. Um, and at each end of the playground was a steel post with a, a complete uh, set of gear, BC uh, regs, everything just for safety, uh, whether uh, she needed it or whether a safety diver needed it. We had one on each end, and then uh, usually every other safety diver would go out with a, a new rig um, because she was going through a tank roughly every two hours. So, yeah, we, and, we learned quickly she didn't need one every hour. That's how we started with every hour, and yeah. she was not using it every hour. Well, I see Jack took an easy spot, he had an 8 a.m. spot. Yeah, so oh, that's an 8 p.m. Sorry, 8 p.m. because that's day oh. one. Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> you can see the blank. So, and then you can, you can I'm see there the, the nighttime. <laughs> I, I officially participated. Uh, well, and you can, tell, you can see I mean, the nighttime hours. We've got two divers on there uh, with her at all times during nighttime hours. Um, and you can see, oops, uh, you can see some parts mean. where um, I know down here, uh, one of my friends, John, he did two sessions because yeah. he was down yep. there on doubles. Yep which was very handy. Yes. And yeah, so that whiteboard, um, I don't even, where did we find that? It was like on Craigslist or something for free. And I was like, sweet. Yeah, we, we dragged this thing out there and it was like our lifeblood. Like it was the only way that I knew exactly what was going on. And we had every tank numbered or every, you know, every, every tank was numbered, but the setups were, you know, all considered part of that. So we literally had, you know, set one, two, three, four, and so I, I was cycling through, so we knew exactly which one she was on, how much air she ended with, how much she started with. We, we were monitoring all of that. And I think every 12 hours, we, we planned on switching her to nitrox, just to try mm -hmm. to give her a little bit of a bump in between. Um, Worked. Thank you, Rocio. <laughs> so, yeah, Rocio is watching, uh, I think, on the Facebook Live part, just so I know. Yeah, so we had, there was a lot of moving parts between the tanks, the computers, the GoPros, the batteries, the, I mean, every, every little piece that was moving, it was very, a lot, a lot to manage, not to mention, okay, when are we going to feed everybody? Where, how many volunteers do we have now? Who has to leave? Uh, who's logging all of her dives? Because we had somebody, you know, making sure we had a log of everything, because that was another Guinness requirement was all of the logs of everything. So we had somebody dedicated just to that. Um, I mean, we just had, like, thank God, uh, the park was a public park and they just let us do what we wanted. And they literally said to us, as long as you don't set up an actual, like, living space, it's fine. Like, you can have a pop-up, you know, you just can't have, like, a tent that people are, like, fully living in. And we're like, okay, no problem. <laughs> But pretty much you stayed overnight. <laughs> yes, yes, we did. We did. 
So yeah, tons technically of you're not supposed to spend the night there other than I think on 4th of July, they allow it, but yeah. they didn't bother us. We no. kept quiet cool. and kept a low profile. So nobody bothered us. Oh, you didn't have the party tent going? No. Uh, no. <laughs> we were also tired. Are you kidding? We were just that like... was underwater. The party was underwater. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, from just so you know, I, the visibility, this is what it looked like. Um, so for people thinking that, oh, it was like awesome, like hundred foot vis, it was like 10, maybe 15 foot vis at times. Um, but it was pretty much your playground. You couldn't see from one end to the other, I'd say most of the time. Um, so I liked, I liked, uh, setting the lights up at night. Um, it, it definitely made navigating through the playground, you know, not going out of bounds. I only had to go out of bounds once. I think it was like the last night just because of how far out the tide was going. Um, but at nighttime, I, it, to me, it was a lot clearer at night mm -hmm. during, than during the day. But yeah, we had tons of people come by and express interest in what we were doing. And then we had flyers out there so people could donate to, um, you know, the, Cancer, American Cancer Society and all of that. Yeah, so. one of the highlights, I, I, I don't know who, who all knows this or not, but um, as, as we got closer to the 50 hour mark, you know, Scott, Scott comes down and he's got this slate in his hand. And he just, he just looks at me, held it up, and it said something along the lines of, uh, by the way, the men's record is currently 5124. And he just looked at me and like his, the, the, the look in his eyes were like, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> there, there went another hour and 25 minutes of my life uh, just to avoid Scott choking me and well, sitting and, on me. And there was word that when that morning, that, that last morning, when it was a 50 degree current that was ripping through the playground and we that's just, that's right. That's right. You wanted to bring this up. Yeah. So we were just like, it was early and we were all just kind of tired and everything. And, and we're like, okay, let's, let's do another day. And we got word like Christy's really cold. She's really, really cold. And we're like, okay, what do we do? So we were like hot water, hot liquids, soups, anything we could give her, we were giving her. And so team Christy, which was basically the people that were responsible for like her and her well-being, like it was her support system for that. They came back and they said, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out there. I'm just going to go out there and see her. I got to, I got to get some face time with her. So they went out, um, they saw her. I had seen her, I think a couple hours before, or uh, maybe a couple hours after you, at this point, but at one point I went and saw her and she was like I just knew the look in her eyes and I was like I know I know like I know all the things and so we they went down talked to her and they came back with this slate and it was like a like a full page slate and they come back with this slate and it's like a freaking like epilogue and we're like oh my god so they're like gather everyone around we have you know we need to talk and so we gather the team around and it was basically like you know, like everything that she was feeling in that moment. And it was basically like, we're going to do this. Like, I don't care what we have to do. We are beating the record. It does not matter. We will beat the record. We will come up at 51.25 and that's it. Or, you know, like all costs, we're doing this. And at that moment, all of us that were feeling this, like a little bit of, you know, just being tired, a little discouraged or whatever, we just all started crying and we're like, we're going to do this. <laughs> so just yeah, that was life. definitely a highlight, you know, uh, <laughs> at that point, the, the, the three days, the 72 hours was, was well off the table, um, you know, but there was absolutely no way that we weren't going to get the record at that point. The, the team had basically come together just from word of mouth. And, and I think a lot that has to do with is that in one way or another, we all had someone in our lives, you know, that either we had lost to cancer or they were battling cancer. So there was absolutely no way that 
with just, you know, eight, nine more hours to go that, that I was going to quit. We, we had worked so hard to that point. There was no going back. No way. Yeah. So I have some, I have some video here to show of that, of that moment. Oh no. Um, Which video is this? I was like that moment? (laughs) Which moment? Oh, I. Wait, is there audio? Hang on. Oh, did I not click the button? I I promise you I'm American, not an Australian. There we go. <laughs> Did they say you were Australian? There should be audio at this. Oh, maybe no audio, but <laughs> all the stuff worked ahead of time. So you did have to walk back and forth to make sure you're at the right depth. Australia, that's funny. Nine hundred and seventy-two minutes. Yeah, we had one computer that was the the constant that had to be down there for the whole thing. This was the only computer. The Shearwater was the only computer we could find that wouldn't, you know, zero out after what twenty-four hours or something like that. It was like 999 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, Shearwater. (laughs) We did also take um, things for her to do down there. We had Rubik's Cubes. We had game. We like we spent a whole meeting talking about what she's going to do under there that whole time. And we came up with some good solutions of things that we were like, okay, we can take this in salt water. She can still play with it. It's all good. And this was her coming out. We brought her out in the boat. I just like to mention the guy in the white t-shirt there is the world famous orca trainer, Chris Fisher. (laughs) And dolphin extraordinaire. (laughs) <laughs> he hates it when I say that. <laughs> so that was her coming oh, out. There it is. There it is. And they brought they brought her a wheelchair just in case because we didn't know like what after all that time if she's going to be able to even walk. And Chrissy's like, "Get that thing out of here!" I'm <laughs> we're like, "Okay." <laughs> I think she took about ten seconds worth of O2, and she said, "That's enough." Yeah. But there was a whole group of divers that went out. Um, so like I went out, Scott went out, like we all went out to bring her up and, and in. So it's kind of like a little underwater celebration at the end there. Yeah, I was sitting there looking at the time for, I, all I wanted to see was 51.25. And I turned around and there must have been probably 20, 25, 30 divers. But what was incredible was how many people were on the surface. I mean, there yeah. were there were probably at least 50, 60 people in kayaks, you know, just in snorkeling stuff. Like there were a lot of people. So well, plus even you were when the lifeguards people. came down, when yeah. we brought her out, even the lifeguards came down just to wish her well. Yeah. And we told everybody as they were like going by and asking us what it was. We're like, at this time, we want a party on the beach. So like everybody run down there and just make as much noise and be obnoxious and help help us bring her out. So going back to I mean, to a couple of questions, you you mentioned the Rubik's Cube and stuff like that. Um, I know that when I went down there, Christy, you seemed to be like you had like little missions. (laughs) And those missions. Which which night was that? (laughs) uh, Well, when I was there, you had you you tended to like wanted to like move tanks around for some reason. I'm like, well, that's a full tank. And you moved it to this part. And then you (laughs) took that tank and then you moved it back to another corner. I'm like, Sounds right. I'm like, I think he's just trying to stay yeah, busy or something. I don't know. Just you, organizing. You should have, you should have seen her when she spelled out her name in sand dollars and then she I, got I mean, mad because they moved. You know, it, one of the hardest things, um, was boredom. Honestly. I mean, it, it, you can only play Rochambeau in the Rubik's cube you know, and, and other games and, and relay races and having fun with other folks and taking pictures. But 
if you were to start a stopwatch right now, think about everything that you've done or that you would get done or do in the next 51 hours. It, boredom was insane. I mean, so I, I, I got nothing. I've, I have no great answer for you, except that I was probably bored. Well, and that, and part of, part of the reason why Christy was so successful is because she is a stubborn person, at, which is fine because we all have our things, right? But because she's so determined and so, and not willing to give in that, I'm like, that's why, she, that's why we were successful is because she was willing to not give up and she was willing to persevere. Like there were times when we wanted to give up and we're like, we have food, we have clothes, we have warmth, like what, you know? And so it's, I say all the time when people ask us how we did this, I said, we literally put this thing together with nothing. I mean, we were a paper clip and a roll of duct tape and we put this thing together. It was insane. Yeah, so, I, I absolutely, I strongly believe that there, there's no better team um, that we had uh, it, or could have had. Like exactly who was supposed to be there was there. And that is exactly why we're, you know, we were successful and, and the, uh, it, 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 like she said, it started with a paper clip and duct tape, you know, and, and here we are almost seven years later and we still currently hold the record and, and, and I'd like to see, you know, more women go after it and I'd like to see more attempts made. And, you know, it, it's, it, it says a lot about the people you know, like I've, like I've said, I'm just the vessel. I was the one that just was there, you know, but every single thing that every single person did contributed. This is not just my record. This is everyone's record. This is anybody who participated with Team Amazing. This is their record, you know. Um, and, the, and, and the volunteers were amazing. Like they were like, when do you need me there? What do you want me to do? And they were just ready and willing to be a part of it. And it was crazy how willing and giving everybody was I mean it really honestly we and like Christy said nobody has been successful with the female record after her and we've seen teams that have crazy sponsorships like we had sponsors we had generous sponsors but like nothing like what we have seen other people attempt to do and huge sponsors with like tons of resources and they weren't even able to do what we did and I think it speaks to the volunteers. It speaks to the people that we had involved. It speaks to, you know, Christy's perseverance. It speaks to all of it. It was just like the perfect combination and it just came together. And when Lindsay says we, she doesn't mean just this little core group of people. No, she means everyone no. involved. I mean, Everybody. we had, we had people from non-divers to open water to tech divers, every, everything in between without all of you, this wouldn't have been possible. So I have a, a couple of, uh, I guess, during the dive questions. Um, so the question came up about sleep. I know this on my second day of helping you or second session helping you. I remember you having that fold up lawn chair and you're trying to like sleep. And that that day for me, I'm like, going, well, that sucks because I'm like watching you on the thing and then next thing you know, I see you floating away over here and then you come back because there's so much surge um, and you're trying to catch a cat nap. What's the longest you were able to actually fall asleep <laughs> or was there none? I mean, like, so I, I think could... I fell, I think I fell asleep somewhere around hour 12 and I woke up about hour 49. Honestly, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I, I, I really don't know. Um, and it's hard for us to know because as safety divers, we couldn't we're literally just watching to make sure she still has bubbles. And that's what we told. I mean, you don't have to tell Mike wins, like make sure she's still breathing, but we literally were just like, watch her and make sure she's still breathing. And that's all we care about. Even if you are not doing anything with her or act, you know, wanting to, if she doesn't want you to interact with her or whatever, just make sure she's still breathing. And it was hard for them to tell when she was actually getting sleep. Cause we would ask, and we were, we had a portion of the chart mapped out for that to track her sleep. And it was literally like, they're like, we don't know, like maybe, maybe a half yeah. an hour. Like, I, you know, I kind of felt bad a, a few times, you know, cause I was just trying to like do my thing and just kind of rest and people, you know, they're like, and I'm like, get out of here. Like, beat it. Like, get out of here. I am completely aware that I have a thousand PSI in my tank, you know, like it, it, it I don't know. 
Yeah, no, I can see that. Like in and out. Um, I don't know. Sometimes some parts of the dive were a little bit more difficult than others. And then, you know, towards the, the later in hours, it just, the temperature was challenging. I think uh, my endurance was kind of running to its end. And, you know, it was it like, I knew there was no way that I was going to quit or surface before that time was met. And it was just kind of like, I know I was grumpy and I was, you know, kind of walking around kicking sand and, you know, Scott coming down and bothering me, telling me, oh, by the way, you're going to spend another hour and 25 minutes. It was just like so much, you know, so if I was a jerk, I apologize, but well, I mean, we, we got knew. it done. We got it done. Well, and we knew the times too, because we're like, all right, we need to send Scott out because we need to go fire her up a little bit. Or, oh, we need to send Lindsay out because she needs to like check on her or we need to send her team out of uh, Team Christy out to see like who, where, where she's at emotionally, you know. So we did, we knew when we needed to support her and we tried to give her everything she asked for. I think there was a couple times when I was like, she came back with requests and it, they would literally bring me her slate and be like, this is what she's saying. And I'm like, my God, like it was so, some, some of the requests I was just like, I don't even know what to do with this. What was the <laughs> thing that you asked me for that I was like, you know, it's, I don't know. It was like something insane. Like I want chicken or I want, and I'm like, you can't have Vaseline on my neck. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I did do that, but that was, that was an easy one. And I remember when I went down there to see her like towards the end and I could see that she was miserable and I took the Vaseline down. I told, so Chris Fisher. Yeah. So the next seal on the dry suit started to chafe against her neck because it's not intended to be worn 17,000 hours. So we had a, t a tub of Vaseline that was in her kit on the boat, like ready to go just in case she needed it. And so I'm down there with her and I'm fumbling around in her crate because she had her little crate of toys and all the things that she needs. And I'm looking for the Vaseline and I turn around and I see just a person next to me. And I'm like, who the hell is down here? Chris Fisher had freed dove down and he like hands me the Vaseline and I'm like, Wow, like this, this team is just insane. He was in shorts and <sighs> yes, dolphin shorts and yeah. like it's insane. Well, he came up to me because I happened to be on boat watch. He's like, "Hey, can I borrow your mask for a minute so he could dive down and see her?" Yeah, yeah. The motivation definitely kept me going. Um, my, <clears throat> you know, Graham Hufford. He was my he was my open water instructor all the way through. Uh, open water instructor. And, um, I mean, at one point I just remember he, you know, he was, he was, you know, like he's all calm, cool, collected, you know, and I'm trying to like woo my in my head, you know, and I just grabbed his legs and I'm just like crying and, you know, he's like, it's okay. You know, kind of like brought me back to, to, you know, polywog days where, you know, I was in the pool trying to learn how to do a, a mask or place, you know, and, and it, it was just, you know, having different people come down and motivate me in different ways definitely uh, helped, especially later, because it, it's hard. It, look, it's not a joke. I mean, right. it's hard, yeah. you know, and, and we knew, you know, that, uh, well, first and foremost, you know, there's, there's nothing easy about cancer. We knew there was nothing going to be easy about this dive, and we knew it was going to be hard. We knew that we were going to have to dig deep, and, and we did it. Yeah. So it's awesome. I'm, it's, it's, uh, I'm still impressed to this day with, with everything you guys did. So, um, Christy, it's called the Graham C. Hufford lull of serenity. That's what I call it. That is what I called it during my instructor, the lull of serenity. <laughs> <laughs> he has a way. It came right when it was needed. Yep. Okay. So we should start wrapping this up. We went a little bit over time. Um, but you know, it's all, I mean, this is incredible. I mean, it's just, um, you know, it's it's good to go back and, and look at these things. Um, and I I, <laughs> I know I asked, um, someone did ask about your toilet needs and we did kind of address that with the P valve. Um, we're not gonna go at the other end of stuff, um, yeah. but <laughs> you did have to intake actual forms of food to keep your, your energy levels up. I was stuff. fed I'm, very well. And, um, and I don't want to go to this other end of discussion. Please don't. Um, because that's not me. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so I know <laughs> I, I kind of 
passively asked Scott this before. Um, and I assume it's like, wow, why would I do that again? <laughs> would you do this again? If, I mean, I mean, that's, it seems like it's a lot that went into it. Well, um, you know what? I think um, doing this again, it would absolutely be in warmer water. <laughs> number one, number one, warmer water. Um, do you know when you when you go back and, and you and you look at all the lessons learned and you and you you know oh we didn't think of that or we didn't think of this or hey that would have been so much easier you know um, I, I would absolutely do it again uh, I would absolutely I absolutely challenge anyone to do it you know just 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 you know if you've ever wanted to self check yourself and see what you got and see what you're made of you know uh, do it you know we didn't do this for a record. All right. It was that was never it. The, pulling the world record into this was to get attention for the fundraiser, you know. But if if somebody wanted to just do, you know, this for having a record, uh, by all means, you know, go for it and and good luck to you. Um, yeah. And there's you no know. distinction for Guinness between cold water and salt water, which is bananas to all of us cold water divers. But so you could theoretically do it in 80 degree yeah. water, you know. <laughs> I, I, I would say, um, you know, if there's anything that, you know, I have my mind on, it, it kind of is happening during uh, the pre-COVID days and uh, there's not a freshwater woman's record. And, uh, you know, Florida is a lot warmer than California. So I don't know, but I mean, if it, if it had a good reason to do it in a, in a you know, a, something other than just holding the record yeah absolutely i'd do it I'd so, so speaking of the record so we've seen that guinness gave you some balloons um do you have a plaque and is it hanging up okay so yes i do i i was sent the official uh photo or i, I the what is it, it i have I photos remember. of it i mean i'm sure it's somewhere on facebook or the team page um it is actually hanging up in my hallway and uh i walk past it every single day and it taps my head you know today's a new day you can get up you can do whatever you want you know it, it just kind of serves as a reminder yeah. awesome okay so let's uh wrap this up um if uh, anyone out there, if you have some an, another great topic that you'd like to discuss, um, or once I figure out what I want to talk, know more information about next time, um, check back with Deep Dive with DUI, um, and we'll post more of these. Don't forget that um, all these can be viewed right away once the Facebook Live event's done. You can rewatch it. Um, we also post them on the YouTube the DUI YouTube channel. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for um, doing this awareness for, for cancer. I mean, that's, I hats off to you. And it's, I probably would have walked the three, the three day walk. Even though I love diving, but I'm like, hmm, three days of walking. Yeah. That sounds pretty good now. <laughs> so so thank you for, for um, you know, taking the time to share with everybody. Um, and thank you again. So thanks, Jack. So, All right. Thanks a lot for having us. So with that, thanks for having us, Jack. We'll, we'll see you next time. OK. And All right. up on the screen, just for everyone can see this, is um, the Facebook putting cancer under pressure. And also, the I, I did post the link to that video with sound um in the chat and on the message on the uh facebook event or the video for this um so please check those out everybody um and contact scott Lindsay, or christy about any of you know future questions um and i and if you post them on facebook we will try and answer those questions or direct them wherever they need to go okay so thanks everyone we'll see you uh next time and and by, I, I'm going to let this kind of like run for a little bit so you guys can log off whenever you feel like it. All right. Okay.
Thank you. We'll see yep. you later. Yep. I got to get okay. back to work. Thanks, Jack. Yep. yep. Thanks.